the best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. everybody welcome back to the mausoleum otherwise going to be some world series of poker right now just saw the most people i've seen all day on the uh, break from the limit tournament but otherwise oh i hate to say it but it's been snoozeville 2014 yikes a very quiet day but a few things going on and we're gonna break it down for you probably gonna have a short show today because we you know it's just it's just quiet <laughs> Not a lot of people here today, uh, so you know, if we come come on with somebody interesting to pop on the show, we will. But we're going to break down everything going on with the Heads Up Tournament, the Dealer's Choice. We've got a final, uh, final table going on as well. Some great veterans of the game making deep runs in this Dealer's Choice Tournament, including Jen Harmon. Jen doing pretty well here. Uh, we got... But we got Ryan LaPlante, of course, leading the way. We're going to talk about all that in just a second. Of course, uh, we want to remind everybody once again, hey, if you haven't gotten your tickets to head over to World Series of Fighting 10 tomorrow night over at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, card starts at 4 o'clock, doors open 3.30, so get on over there. Get excited. You're going to see three title fights coming up. And, of course, that will also be on NBC Sports Network uh, starting at 6 o'clock p.m. Looking at David Branch against Jesse Taylor for the middleweight WSOF, WSOF middleweight championship. Georgie Karakayan from Riverside, California, taking on Rick Glenn for the featherweight championship and a strawweight ladies fight championship match between Jessica Aguiar and Emi Fujino. Should be a wild one there. Uh, and, of course, uh, some other big fights as well. Tyson Griffin on there. And a ton of prelims, too. So it's going to be a great time over there. Make sure you get your tickets. Go on over to WSOF.com. And have a great time watching them beating each other up. Should be entertaining, to say the least. All right. And, of course, uh, some of our other sponsors of the show. We uh, didn't get our sp second sponsor roll in, so just want to say hi to the rest of the team. We've got our friends at BlueRail.net. Where do you want to go? It is BlueRail.net. We build websites. Or how far do you want to go? Excuse me. Uh, Bob Luskin and the team at call, call 522 5128 That's the team that's built my websites for a long, long time, and uh, you'll be happy you joined on with the Blue Rail team. Once again, give Bob a call, 522-820-5128. The Mata Poker League. Hey, if you're hanging around here and you, know, you just need to get away and have some fun, you know, not play with a lot of pressure like there is for a bracelet. You can play $50,000 in prizes and cash all free at NevadaPokerLeague.com, 17 locations here in the Las Vegas area. Our good friends at Off Tilt Poker Tables, $300 off your purchase price. If you're shopping for a table, there's no other place to go. They built the RFID table for the World Series, for the Mid-States Poker Tour, for the Deep Stacks Poker Tour. And, you know, in personal tables are guys like Jonathan Papelbon. I mean, you you can't go wrong. So go pick a table at offtiltpokertables.com or give Brian not a call, 262-490-3812. Uh, the Global Poker Index, they're simulcast on our shows, so make sure you check out the Global Poker Ranking Authority at globalpokerindex.com. Uh, the top ladies poker team in the world, the Grind Debt's taking care of you, too. Of course, uh, regulars on our KLAV show. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we're kind of fluctuating that schedule a little bit, but uh, have been a staple of the Mark Hoke Show for a couple of years now, and we really want to thank them for being a part of it. Katie Stone, Katie Dozier, Jamie Kerstetter, and Jennifer Shahade. So check them out, grindettes.com. Give them a follow on Twitter, at Grindettes, and the Grindettes on Facebook. Uh, Las Vegas Advisor, hey, if you live in Las Vegas, are you coming out? Great coupon book. Get your membership today on lasvegasadvisor.com. You'll get the membership book, online memberships, all sorts of great stuff. So check it out, LasVegasAdvisor.com. And, of course, the book Sweeping the Poker World, especially thanks to Dutch Boy winning a bracelet, Poker Tilt, 
Make sure you go to PokerTilt.com, or you can pick it up on Amazon as well. So enjoy that. It's an outstanding book. You're gonna, you're a poker player. It is a must read. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. If you don't, you know what? I'll send you a cookie or something. But check it out uh, at PokerTilt.com. All right. So we're down to a final four in the heads up. We've got a final table going on event 39. Uh, we have the dealer's choice going on, plus two other events that started today. So let's uh, let's barrel through it, and we'll get lucky and see who's around to say hi to us. All right, and I think first we're gonna go. Yeah, let's come back to that. Give me one second. Of course, I have that both up. Uh, early the late start today was event forty three, the dreaded limit hold'em event. An interesting mix, though. You'd, you'd think it would be all the older players, but there is quite a mix of players in this right now. Uh, they're listing 585. Obviously, should be a lot more. And, uh, well, here's an irony. I, I told Mammy John Cernuto to go in there. He's like, should I take it easy or should I start 4-betting? I'm like, 4-bet it. Go for it. Why not? So, <laughs> Miami John has stack getting low, of course, because I said that to him. Uh, Jack 8-6 on flops. Cernuto bets after the other two players check. Gets one call, and then somebody uh, two bets it. Cernuto three bets. Original caller makes the call. Turn to seven. Both players check it off. River three. Player nine seat bets. Cernuto calls. Cernuto's opponent with a king jack, but John fired away with the kings. Yeah, baby. So Miami John Cernuto picking up a few chips back early in that one. Kenneth James uh, has his girlfriend's card protector in the room tank the four-year-old terrier chihuahua mix <laughs> good lord are you kidding me uh, some updated chip counts from some of the top players in there daniel Negron is actually at 9700 so he's recovered for his defeat in the heads up tournament jeff schulman at 7500 mike lee at 55 uh david williams at 45 you know obviously a lot of Interesting happenings going. On. Hurley thirty three. I Hurley, you are the man. Okay, you've been drinking, and it's okay. Mark Hoke is the greatest poker radio show host ever. Where's Gavin Smith? He might challenge me on. Might challenge that. But that's awfully sweet of you to say, even if you are drunk. Hey, Gavin. Guess what? One of uh, one of my listeners just said that Mark Hoke is the greatest poker radio sh radio show host ever. Now he has been drinking. He has been drinking, uh, the guy, the fan that said that. But you know, it's a pretty nice compliment. What do you think of that, Gavin? No. no? Am I number two? Can I be number two at least? No. No. I mean, I had three hosts with my show that were better than you. Wow, that hurts. Yeah, well, you know what? And you know what? I'm still damn good. I'm getting there. <laughs> Give me time. Give me time. Uh, Raymond's running around. I've, my wingmen are sick and ill. It's been weird. But uh, All right. Good luck. Well, at least I'm in the top five for Gavin. <laughs> That's funny, though. Um, yeah, Gavin's already been on. If you haven't missed, seen the videos that we have up on our shows on YouTube, you missed a Gavin Smith classic. Yikes. Go to just punch up Mark Hoke on YouTube. You can see all those. We're getting some. We have some highlight real podcasts on there as well. Actually, that one's downloadable too. Uh, we're gonna get some new podcasts up for you probably on Monday. That's because we're getting a few of them edited down, and I kind of gotta watch my storage space on that. But we'll have a ton of great, uh, great podcasts for you to download, including our KLAV shows too. So make sure you check that out. All right, uh, back to. The Limit Hold'em event, uh, once again, like I said, that one just getting underway tonight. So these guys are firing away. Pot Limit Omaha, six-handed 5K event. Event number 42, right now listing at 434 entries. And let's hit our chip counts. Oh, my God, the most wonderful woman. Oh, Kara Scott is here, everybody. Finally, finally, it's about time. Pablo in Omaha, 6 hand. Michael Zawinga, 65,000. Corey Kilpatrick, a bracelet winner, 56,000. Andre Zychenko at 52. Darius Stuttered, 52. Phil Galfon, 48,5. Noah Schwartz, 43. Davidi Katai, 45. Yegeni Timoshenko, 45,000. 
So a bunch of players, top names, off to a pretty good start. Now, as you would expect, this is going to be a pretty exclusive field with it being a 5K. So 434 players at the moment on the board for that one. Uh, we will go to event number 41. That is the dealer's choice six-handed. Of course, everything was all light and happy in there until Brandon Cantu decided that it would be a good time to get into a little bit of an altercation. Uh, but Perry Green has jumped out in this one uh, with 38 players remaining. And things are you know, obviously starting to get serious because now we're all remembering we're playing for a bracelet in there. Uh, Perry Green is at 110. Maria Mayrink, who made a double call down earlier in this tournament to pop the bubble, uh, is at 94,000. Larry Tull at 81.6. Aaron Schaff at 80. Brandon Cantu. Boy, there he goes. There's there's Brandon right now in fifth place. 80,000 or 80, 75,000. Uh, Mikhail Blomley is at 61.7. Frank Casella former World Series of Poker Player of the Year at 60, Jen Harmon, and she just walked by in eighth place. So there's a pretty good uh, start for Jen Harmon on this one as she is at 56,000. Daniel DePasquale at 55, Jeffrey Mervis rounding out your top 10. Uh, some other notables still left in there, Sean Buchanan. It's a name we haven't heard for a little bit. He's at 45,000. Uh, Maria Ho still in there at 36, Todd Brunson 35.7. Marco Johnson, 35, Daniel Adima, excuse me, Gabriel Nassif at 33, Daniel Adima, 27, and Melissa Burr listed at 24. Uh, I don't think these are all quite updated yet, but they are seeing 38 players left in this uh, Dealer's Choice six-handed event. So we'll try and get a little bit of rundown of what's been going on in there, and we'll see who we can pull over to the stand, but there's event number 41. Uh, we're going to go to the No Limit Hold'em event number 39 right now, and that one uh, is on a dinner break, and uh, actually they might be back. Uh, we have a Final Nine on there. Just like Final Nine Comic.com, we've got a Final Nine. It is the official final table as Clyde Walters just a couple minutes ago was eliminated and let's see, looks like Lane, uh, let's see, Walters up against Sean Dempsey and gets eliminated on a, uh, looks like, I'm guessing aces against Jack Jack. They've got a boy, they've got to get that fixed. But Clive Walters goes down, and here is your final nine, and we can go around the table. Uh, Ryan Alisar at 712, Nam Lee. <laughs> and look at that, Daniel Grano always kind of mocked on high stakes poker. Nam Lee is in, set, is in seat two, 332. Andrew Becker, 412. Sean Dempsey, just behind the chip leader. He's at 1.88 million and not winning this thing right now as Ryan LaPlante. And uh, that's exciting news. You know, for those of us that. So there's a few of us in our, this little group, including guys like Hurley and Jake and uh, some of these other players that go way back. And Ryan LaPlante is. Uh, Headed into the room right now, actually. They, they were taking a short break for the get the final table started. Uh, but he is potential, and Ryan, of course, uh, one of those great young players we've been hyping on our shows, and uh, Ryan at 1.995 million, so just under the 2 million chip mark. And it, it's a, a pretty interesting spot. I tell you what, it really couldn't have gone too much better for Ryan. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Look at that. Devilfish on a scooter, sharing a scooter. That's all right. Um, but Laplante in seat five has got Dempsey to his right, so that's pretty good. And then, of course, uh, you know the short stack's going the other way, but Laplante, uh, with so many chips right now, is in fantastic position and got the right spot on Dempsey, too. Kind of have a feeling you may end up seeing those guys at the end here, but still some other very good players. Takashi Agura at 829 is in seat six, and Lane Flack. Back to back is at 808,000. He's going to have a long way to go to catch up, but Lane Flack at 808,000 in sitting in seat seven. Jacob Schindler in seat eight, a little over 1 million in chips, and Ryan Giaconetti in seat nine. So, Ryan LaPlante, is he on his way to that elusive World Series of Poker bracelet? He's come close a couple of times, but this could be his night. So, we will see if Ryan LaPlante walks out of the Rio tonight with a brand new piece of gold around his, around his wrist. 
So let's wish uh, Ryan the best of luck. And, of course, uh, Lane Flack, good friend of the show, too. So be happy with either of those guys taking this tournament down. All right. So they are just underway, and you'll be able to watch them on the live stream at WSOP.com in just a little bit. Uh, let's go. We probably should head over to the Heads Up Tournament. Of course, so uh, you know, I reported George Danzer winning bracelet number two today in this World Series and the second overall as he won a great battle last night in the seven card stud high low split eight or better and knocked off a, a game John Raisner who just battled it out last night. I mean, Raisner was down to 100,000 chips and was upset about uh, an action Danzer took with his cards. But go ship that right over to George Danzer. So the Germans uh, doing okay, and especially Danzer leading the way on this one. We go to, and let's get back to the head. So let's get to the heads up now. And a lot of the big names really got cleared out on this thing. It was not a not a fun ride for some of these guys. As your final four, and let me see if we can pull a bracket up here. It is going to be, uh, excuse me, Sam Stein against Scott Davies. And Daniel Coleman will take on uh, Davidi Suriano. And while we were off this afternoon, Sam Stein uh, defeats Scott Baumstein in the round of eight and Max Silver in the round of 16. Eric Seidel lost to Baumstein, so that got him out of the way. Uh, Scott Davies in a very odd hand. D. Tiller, who had <laughs> just been blasting through some of the best in the game, just absolutely blew up and uh, decided that Davies had raised him. This is unbelievable, right? Davies had raised him to 20,000 on a hand. D. Tiller pushes 800,000 chips in on level number one. And Davies calls with jacks. Tiller flips over fours. And we say goodbye to the Texas oil magnate D. Tiller out of there. And Scott Davies goes to the semifinals. Tommy Chen, who is getting a little bit lippy, apparently, with Daniel Negreanu. Uh Chen defeated Negranu, but could not defeat Daniel Coleman. Coleman defeated Taylor Parr and then knocks off Chen. And Daniel Coleman goes to the final four. And uh, Davidi Sur Suriano, who knocks off Sirkan Kernaz and then the, beats the heads-up specialist, Ankush Mandavia. So Davidi Serrano is a big winner on there. And uh, so there's your final four. And just to kind of give you a little bit of... Oh, my heart just sinks every time. Oh, my God. I love the WSOP.com girls. Um, to give you a little breakdown of what we have, <laughs> Umberto Brand has got to love it. Waving the flag. Do I, do I get the flag? What? There you go. That Costa Rica going. Got to love it. Umberto Brennis. <laughs> There's a little treat for you, everybody. I'll perk you up. That will do it. <laughs> I love that guy. He's hilarious. Uh, Daniel Coleman, uh, a player out of Massachusetts. Uh, he is listed as 183rd all-time on the U.S. money list. And uh, does have a couple first places. Uh, Coleman with two championships winning a, actually winning a super satellite at the Doyle Brunson Five Diamond World Poker Classic. And just a few months ago won the uh, $100,000 No Limit Hold'em Super High Roller at the EPT Grand Final in Monaco. That picked him up uh, a little over $2 million on that one. Uh, by far his biggest win. Uh, he has a second place in the Heads Up Championship in 2011 at the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. Uh, he also has a third in a Party Poker Premier League series, a 5K fourth place finish on in the Heartland Poker Tour. So this is a guy that uh, you know, does know how to play a little bit of Heads Up. Of course, uh, live earnings of over $2.7 A lot of that coming in that high roller event and the Party Poker Premier League. 
Uh, does have a seventh place finish in the Bellagio Cup Seven, Las Vegas in 2011. So this is a guy that's got a you know pretty solid resume. You know, not the one that uh, not some of the ones you would have expected to see getting here, but still a pretty impressive run for Daniel Coleman. So he will be one of your semifinalists. And sorry, bear with one moment here. And Coleman will be taking on Davidi Suriano. Uh, Suriano uh, from Bari, Italy. Uh, it was one about a quarter of a million dollars, so he's going to be definitely uh, kicking up the bankroll just a little bit on this one. Uh, has two first places. He has actually won a couple of heads-up tournaments in the last couple two years. Uh, we've got the WPT Venice Grand Prix uh, winning the th a $1,350 heads-up tournament there in 2012. Also won another heads-up tournament, uh, 1K buy-in at the EPT UK and Ireland Poker Tour in London. And has a couple seconds in some Italian, Italian Poker Open main event, an ex-poker challenge event in St. Vincent. Uh, you know, some, so some pretty, uh, pretty nice runs for him uh, in terms of his winnings. Of course, this one's going to eclipse a lot of it. Uh, his biggest score came in the 2012 Italian Poker Open, uh, where he won $73,879. So this is going to be his biggest payday ever. So Davidi Soriano, he will be facing Daniel Coleman. In the other semifinal, a guy we're all pretty familiar with, Sam Stein, uh, probably the most you know, the most accomplished player here. He's won almost $4 million in winnings. Uh, his biggest win, of course, he had a World Series of Poker bracelet victory in 2011 where he won the $3,000 Pot Limit Omaha event uh, for a little over $420,000. Uh, also won an, a 10K 8-max tournament at the EPT San Remo in 2011 for $307,000. Had a half million dollar score in a 2010 deep stack extravaganza here in Las Vegas on the North American Poker Tour. Well, that was still around. Uh, also has a first place and a 5K buy-in at the WPT World Championships in 2013. But of course, his biggest score uh, was in 2011 at the Par uh, Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure, where he placed fourth in the main event, won one million dollars on that. So that is his biggest victory here, and of course, does have a World Series of Poker bracelet. So these guys, so uh, Sam Stein, uh, probably you, know, you kind of look at him being your favorite. Uh, he's going to take on Scott Davies, and this is a little, another uh, underdog score. Of course, we know a little bit about Scott. Uh, it was about uh, two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars in winnings. And just looking at the, some of the other rankings, uh, he's ranked 673rd in the Global Poker Index. Uh, his biggest scores, actually, came, biggest one, a fifty thousand, fifty-one thousand dollars score at the uh, ANZPT in Perth in a two thousand dollar, two thousand dollar Australian dollar buy-in, uh, where he came in third for fifty-one thousand eight hundred seven. Uh, has a couple of caches, including uh, here at the World Series this year. Uh, his biggest one, his best finish uh, out of those looks like a 12th place this year in the $2,500 No Limit event, event number 29. So Scott Davies having a good World Series and has a you know, pretty deep finish, 356 in event in the main event in 2011. And we'll pull up his uh, wins here real quick. And that is going to be, of course, uh, his loan victory on his resume a 200 200 and i shouldn't laugh 200 euro buy-in uh ept grand final event in monte carlo is is uh one win listed on hendon mob so you gotta kind of figure this actually really worked out the number one against number four number two against number three i would have to say uh sam stein uh should be the favorite here Dan Coleman's not going to be an easy out. And actually, uh, I would say neither would be Soriano, as uh, he knows what he's doing here in Heads Up, too. So this is going to be a, an interesting final four. Sam Stein, your biggest name, and uh, we'll see if Sam Stein can take home this championship today. Like I said, would have to be the favorite 
in this one, but we will uh, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, so let's take a break, and we come back. Uh, we'll see who else is flying around here at the World Series, give you some updates on everything going on. Let's we'll stick around, everyone. We will be right back here on The Mark Hoke Show. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Mark Hoke Show, and Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. Stick around. We'll be right back. MMA Fight Fans, the World Series of Fighting returns to Las Vegas Saturday, June 21st at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Three world championship fights. Women's strawweight champion Jessica Aguilar versus Emmy Fujino. Georgie Karakanyan defends his featherweight title against Rick Glenn. And David Branch goes head-to-head -head against Jesse Taylor for the middleweight championship. Saturday, June 21st at the Joint. For tickets, go to AXS.com and the Hard Rock Box Office or WSOF.com. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE. That's H-O-K-E for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. 
Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back live here at the World Series of Poker 2014. Here on The Mark Hoke Show, thank you for joining us, everybody. We are keeping all the action rolling as much as humanly possible. Given the fact, not a hell of a lot of action going on today. I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, they really don't trust the World Series jobs. So man, 5K pot limit, or 5K PLO tournament today, and a $1,500 limit hold'em tournament today makes it very boring. Thank God Raymond Davis saved the day this afternoon. I think he did. Well, he got on he got on the air. Whether he saved it or completely destroyed it, I have no idea. I don't even know what's going on over there. By the way, that was my wife invading the screen. She decided to say hello. Yeah, or else is you're gonna get me never invited back to the World Series of Poker again. One of the two. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. By the way, Raymond Davis on his Facebook page uh, absolutely destroyed Alan Kessler today. It was. It was not good. Not good for Alan anyway. But a, a destructive force that was Raymond Davis chased down Alan Kessler. You got to go to Raymond's Facebook page and check it out. Good. It was pretty good. Had to chase him down. <laughs> that was unbelievable. All right. Oh, and Raymond's swinging back here. Hey. He was trying to get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah he ran away from He literally ran away from They were like, who's doing the interview? I would have ran too. I said, I'm doing the interview. That was, it was like Hillary Clinton uh, with somebody asking her a Benghazi question. It was just, shoo! They got this, they didn't, he didn't shoo, shoo at me. See ya. Goodbye. That was pretty good. So Raymond's back. What's up, Raymond? Hey. Hanging around in a dead reel. It is. It is horribly. Today was pretty bad. It's been miserable in your Today game. was pretty bad. I'm sorry. It has been miserable. Wow. It'll liven up tomorrow. It's a 1,500. Yeah, that'll get going for the day. But, of course, uh, we're probably going to go to that uh, World Series of Fighting. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. I'm gonna play the 15 no limit and then uh, get some chips and then go to the fight. Wait, so what your so your plan is to play the tournament? To build up chips. Build up enough chips. Quit the last couple of levels and go see the fight. Wow. It, what the is fight it? starts at four o'clock. No, but yeah. the real stuff don't really start until nine. Oh, nice. They got the scrubs, you know, the well, scrubs, you know. the JV fighters fighting okay. early, you know. All right. These guys with three and eleven records and shit. Well, you know what? We were breaking down the car, but let's well let's see because we've got. Uh, Here's your prelims. A.J. Williams, 0-0. Oh, no. O and o. He's a, for his first fight against oh, Tanner Count of against uh, uh, Nephi, Utah. Oh, no. so, so this and is the their two per- guys' first fight. Come on, man! You don't want to see so, you don't no. want to see somebody in their first fight ever. You know, I mean, if you know that was your you know if that was like your cousin or something, would you want to go me, see? I don't want to hear nobody yelling help. <laughs> <laughs> who do you who do you like, AJ Williams or Tanner Cowan? I think I would take the guy from Utah. Probably. You're gonna take the Utah guy. All right, I would have thought you'd gone the other way. I didn't think you no. liked people from Utah. Not too many hard people come from Vegas. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, we, we got another three and oh, three and oh yeah, guy we, against a two and one. Yeah, we got a uh, Jimmy Spook Spacuza. That's an interesting name. Can you hear Bruce Buffer someday saying Jimmy Spacuza against Justin James? Yes. Justin James out of two and one out of Las Vegas. Jimmy Spicuza. That's They're pretty probably good. Buddies fighting each other. You never know. Mm-hmm. You never know. I'll, I'll call it. Uh, Brandon Hempelman of Boise, Idaho, nine and two against eight, seven and one. Andrew Yates out of Greeley, Colorado. That's a good fight. That's a good fight. Got a nine never two seven and one. Him. Well, of course you haven't, but you know it's still a decent fight. Ashley Evans. I think it's a, this is a, a couple women's. of ladies. I'm going to say Ashley Evans Smith. Lake Forest, California, 2-0, taking on Marcia Allen out of Watertown, South Dakota. They're tough in South Dakota. Ashley, Ashley better South watch. Dakota. Yeah, she better watch out. 
That could get uh, really Never nasty. Heard of really Lake quick. Forest, California, so she can't be too tough. Here's another one. Krasimir Blaninov. Ten and zero. Oh. The Bulgarian, the I Bulgarian bruiser Krasimir Mladenov, will be taking on Angel Donata. <laughs> I don't think a girl with angel name has got a chance. It's probably Ann Hell, but you know, out of Oakdale, California. Um, we, and then uh, Adam Aquaviva, Aquaviva out of Henderson, one and zero, oh, will be oh. taking on Timir Valiev out I'll of Moscow, six and one. Boy, we're just we're hopping on the Eastern Europeans here. And Dave Huckaba, Sacramento, California, twenty-one and five against Derek Meeman out of seventeen and five out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's not a bad prelim card. I mean, like, seventeen and five. Seventeen and five. He might have fought a couple bulls or something out there in uh, in Iowa. You know, maybe a couple telephone poles and lost. I, I wish I could get Alan Kessler versus the eleven-year-old on it. On there you the go. Card. That'd be a great match. Well, why don't we? Why should we put Alan Kessler in there against uh, Ashley Evans Smith? He, she would destroy him. Oh, you got to put like so the eleven-year-old girl on it. So bad. That would be horrible. We we'll put Ashley against the eleven-year. Uh, you know, Alan against the eleven-year-old girl. There you go. You Got to give him some kind of chance. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, those are your prelims on the card. And then, of course, the NBC Sports Network main card, five fights you'll be able to see on your television set on NBC Sports. Yes, this Network, is NBC so. Sports. So get in there. Have fun. We'll see you over there. Get your tickets now. See, pre- prelims at 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. Main, main cards, card at 6. At 6. But, you know, it, you might see, you might somebody might, like, get a front kick to the face or something in the prelims and it's over. And you know what? Yeah, you, and you know what's going to happen? And you know what's going to happen? You're going to walk in the door. You're going to come in there late, and somebody is going to take in the front kick to the head. A spectacular knockout, and you're going to find your seat. And everybody's going to be like, "Oh man, Raymond, do you know what you missed? Nothing you won't." And miss. they're going to and they're going to say, Nothing "What you you're going to say? What did I miss?" And they're going to say, "Oh my God, the dude took a front kick to the face and knocked him hey. out, and it was beautiful. And you'll never see anything like that ever again. It was so cool." And you're going to be like, "Oh, nothing you wouldn't miss downtown LA." <laughs> front kick. Good point. Good point. <laughs> front kick to the face. I'd enjoy that, but anyway. So uh, don't forget WSOF coming up tomorrow. Great card, though. Great card. But some people want to go look at the prelim, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, you get 12 fights. Yeah? That's, that's yeah, 12 uh, yeah twelve fights tomorrow. Can't beat the price. That's I, not bad. If anybody still want tickets, I will give them to you if you need them. I'll sell them to you for 10 bucks. If you can afford it, I will give them to you. If you can afford it, I'll sell them to you for 10 bucks. You still got tickets, too? No, you took them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty rat. Oh, my God. Well, so, uh, once again, the... <laughs> Back to the pokery stuff. And like I said, they're probably going to be a little short show tonight. I just turned my Google on. Are you kidding me? You did? Yeah, I did. See that? That was a mistake on my part. We'll get rid of that. All right. And, uh, you know, actually, uh, there's a nice little story on Poker News reviewing some of the cool things that have happened here at the World Series so far. Justin Bono winning uh, just his first bracelet. That was pretty cool. Justin Bono. Winning that bracelet, uh, and they were breaking down some hands too. That's so boring. It's like, oh, there's a hand. There's a big hand. Yeah, we haven't. George seen it. Danzer yep. winning two bracelets, yeah, dominating he, the point play, player of the year. He's been doing very well, destroying uh, the player of the year. I don't think anybody can catch him unless yeah. they win two events. We had this uh, table in the 10K Deuce to Seven Limit Triple Draw, low ball that Tuan Lee, Justin Bonomo, Elliot Lesver, Nick Schulman, George Danzer, Phil Galfond. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a pretty good final table. So you got to the one with uh, Paul Volpe, Brian yeah. Rast, Taylor Negreanu. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm for Jason Mercier. Uh, who else was on that table? Uh, Abe Masseri. I mean, it was just it was brutal. There's been good, some great final tables in this one. Um, yeah, Dominic Nishki winning his another bracelet. He first player, youngest player to win people, a third bracelet, really, twenty three. People really. Uh ticked off about that count that nationals bracelet or whatever you got yeah they don't think that should count uh, you know i kind of agree i kind of agree too. to a point I, it, well if they hold the event here you know that's one thing but now they separated it out this year right which i i think is it i think that was not a good decision no, no it was I, not. I mean i understand you're kind of trying to spread it around a little bit They're trying to market but, it and you know but like out. but like when ryan eric won the national championship here i mean that 
right. you know, that it fit in. It felt like, okay, you know, this was a, a you know, they've been building to this all His year. His girlfriend so at the moment wasn't too happy about that. No. Of course, they were on the final table together. Yeah, that was funny. But they're both, they're, both all, they're both friends again, and everything's cool. Wow. You know, Ryan's doing okay. You know, he's been, you know, fighting those addiction problems and, mm-hmm. and getting through it. And Amanda, you know, has moved on. Everything's everything's nice. They're both doing okay. She's a nice girl. Yeah, she is. She's a spitfire, though. She got don't, some issues, though. Don't get on her bad side. Yeah. Don't mess my, with. She's on my Facebook. Don't mess with Musumeci. It's not a good call. Uh, Daniel Grano coming up one short on his bracelet bet. Of course, when Paul Volpe took him and just drove him into the ground. Yeah. I watched that. That was nice. No offense <laughs> to Daniel, uh, but well, of course, you... of course, uh, we. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Daniel got into a little spiff today. He uh, did with uh, Tommy Chen, uh, talking about bitcoins and yeah, bitcoins. <laughs> it's like, really, they don't like it. That's that's the last thing you really want to start getting into a fight about. But look at check out this guy over here, Umberto Brenes. Waving the flag on the show. You got and nine cashes, eight or nine cashes. Eight cashes here eight. at this World Series of Poker Next, so far. Look at Tony Cousineau, six as usual. Yeah. Well, he keeps cashing and cashing, but never winning. Yeah, he's got to have the most cashes in World Series history with no win, right? Yeah, and there's Linda Johnson. Yes. Poker Linda Hall of Johnson. Famer. Oh, I love, I love your <laughs> oh there Thank you, you. go. Um, Nick, uh, Umberto Brenes with eight cashes out here already. I think the record was a. Uh, I didn't um, eleven, is it? I, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the what the record was. Pretty it was sure it's set, eleven. Who was a uh, uh, Konstantin Puchkov? Yeah. yeah, you know, let's let's look that up real quick. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Well, I'm trying I to remember if it was 11, eleven or thirteen. It's, I think it's eleven. I don't even know if I could spell Puchkov. Let's let's take a look. Da-da-da. This is scintillating radio. This is why I need a producer. You know, somebody sitting over there saying, hey, Mark, there, there you go. Find you know, this information for us. Jack Elfel going by. And 11. Actually, he's not happy. It is 11. I told you. See? It is 11. See, so. I'm like a walk-in encyclopedia. Well, occasionally. You can't say <laughs> selps, though. Can you say selps? Selps. 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 There's a T on the end. T- Who in the hell is selps? selps? Vanessa, Vanessa Selps. I call her Selbis. I know you do. I call people whatever the name looks like. Okay, it's that's a- fair. So what does my name look like? You're Mark Hope. <laughs> Just take the K and twist it like a pretzel. That's all right. <laughs> Not a problem. Mark Ho. Mark Ho. Stop it. <laughs> that's, your, <laughs> that's your last name, too. Yeah, but it's Mark Ho. Rolls off the tongue so much easier than K-Hole. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Put away those cooling towels, dear. Unbelievable. No, she, she trashes her own name. That's that's just that's just insane. Yeah, so Umberto Brennis, three caches away from tying the record. What a long way to go. Umberto, are you gonna break that record? Mm, I try. try. There is no try. Do. Okay, I do Done. Okay. Look at that. Steve's <laughs> joining us. One of the best one of the world's best Raz players. Oh, you got eight right now, you need eleven. Eleven to tie, twelve to win. I know. I know. Done. He'll do it. He's going to do it. He can smell it. What's going on, Steve? Not much, Raymond. How are you? <laughs> You're on live radio. Uh, sort of. He's over there, but he's, yeah. The world can hear you. Sort of. Barely. Yes. <laughs> Barely at best. But that's okay. How you doing? It's an unbelievably slow day. I know, we, you know, it's him. Do you want to run? Yeah, that that ought to tell you something. Would you like about to him. run for president, Steve? Okay. Would you like to run for president, president of what? the United States? Yeah, I can fix a lot of things. It's it's going to be the Estados Unidos if things keep up. Who? It's going to be the Estados Unidos if things keep up. Uh, we won't be speaking them English anymore. It's going to be <laughs> it's going to be Spanish. Take over? No, Estados Unidos. That's Spanish. I, I have to get my legal issues straightened out. Oh, okay. Are you still being indicted? Yeah. Indictment is good. It only means somebody's thinking of you. That's true. There you go. You've been doing nothing for about 30 years. That's right. And they finally indicted you. That's 
They got bored, so they needed something to do. Yeah. Yeah? At least they didn't freeze your bank account shit. Yeah, they got my money. That's why I they got the money? That's why I need you to put me in some corners. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I didn't get my money back. They only offered me 20% of my money back. They did? Yeah, they well, 20% even... of 10 million is still 2 million. Yeah. Yeah. Legalized extortion. Wow. I told you to put all that money in my account. You would have got away with it. <laughs> See what happens? Of course it would. They never checked the black man's account. <laughs> wow. Huh? And you're one of, as I hear, you're one of the top three black men in the, in the poker world. <laughs> if they say so. He's climbing the ladder. Who's the two ahead of me? It's David Williams and... Uh, and uh, who else? Phil Ivey? Yes. They got Phil Ivey ahead of me? Yeah, nobody, they, they won't put anybody on the list. They, <laughs> for some reason, Anthony <laughs> Right. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> so that makes me number. There you go. What am I, number two or three? You're, you're three. He, I'm number he's three. Still got you behind although, David Williams. Although by my math, Paul Darden qualifies ahead of you. See, see, there you go, Steve. See, see, when you put this together, you got to put together a person's whole body of work. What did Paul Darden do on the internet? What did he do in live game? See, people don't know that. I, I, Well, it was Ray Davis 77. I mean, it's pretty easy that it was me. No. It's only one Ray Davis 77. So you said. It was only one Ray Davis 77. So all my stats spoke for themselves. Okay. And then you talk about live. I don't remember Paul Darden playing 4,000, 8,000. Stud. You know? So in, or, in order to be the top, you gotta you got to play against the best and you got to beat them. I don't ever remember losing a session in 4,000, 8,000 stud. Well, that's because you were, you weren't sober. <laughs> I never had a losing session. I mean, or ask. You, or you don't remember. No, I, I remember it. I would remember a loss, a loss in the four thousand, eight thousand. Yeah. You know? So you, you, if you put the if you put together the whole body of work, like Ivy always says, you got to put together a person. Like you asked him the other day, who's better, him or Daniel? Remember that? Yeah. And what his answer was, check, check his two-year results, mm -hmm. and he'll put them up against anybody in the history of poker. Yeah. And that, that's the same thing. You can't just think of tournaments because a lot of people. You might even be better than David Williams, but right now on the list, if you were going to, let's put it this way, if you're going to have that list and you're going to have a list and people have a vote, you're clearly on the list. Right. You're darn would have to be on the list. And then you're going to have to be on the list. And then you're going to have to be on the list. And then you're going to have to be on the list. And then you're going to have to be on the list. Also, Darden is. I, also, have you saw Darden at the World Series? I haven't seen the last time. You want to know the truth? The last time I saw Darden, I tilted him. <laughs> that, he may never have played since then. Wow. He probably hasn't. I, I got on his case for asking the deal to scramble the card. I staked him last year. So, there I you mean, go. the best the, the best players is at the World Series of Poker. You know, nothing against Darden. You know, Darden Darden was a huge name in his days. Uh, he's still got a lot of talent, yeah, but let me let, let me tell let me tell you one thing about Paul Darden though. Paul Darden was probably the, probably one of the super, most talented top five most talented poker players in the world. Then now he can barely make the top five blacklist. Then you get married. Then you get married. Oh, that's the rake to a right woman there. that the already rake. has kids. No, plus yes. plus your kids. Hey, it changes a lot. See, see, when I go broke, when I bust myself, I can only hurt myself. Right. Now, imagine if I had kids and a wife. Well, if you've got kids and a wife and you break yourself, you're going to lose. Like, this man, he can go out there and play poker all night and blow it, but he got responsibilities. Exactly. Once you got responsibilities in your gambling life, it changes your game. You know, not only are you playing for yourself, but you're playing for your wife and kids. So now you can't be as reckless as he was before that. That's what made him so good. I know. As a matter of fact, you got married. You'll probably never win another tournament. You're right. I'll probably never get you'll to play another there, one. You'd be in there playing the limit tournament. Yes. You had to become a family man. When you got six kids that all want new Nike Jordans. I thought you already and, had uh, that problem. No. No? <laughs> and, they got, and you got seven kids that all want the newest Nikes that come out every month or the new iPhone that comes out every other month. 
You know, yep. don't no kid want the, the iPhone too. They don't want a flip phone. A, yeah, or a cricket. So. He got him fired. Wow, he Kessler didn't, pulling he, his what? He didn't fix the chicken breast right. <laughs> Alan Kessler goes in the chicken. He, he, he has a, a, a buffet coupon. He's in the line. The, the pay line is real long, but the buffet free line. Is <laughs> yeah, short. free buffet line. Yeah. Line, it's eight o'clock, and they say the two people in front of him and him. They say no more. We're, we're closed. Oh. So the pay line can still go. So he goes to the manager and says, hey, I'm not going to take that long. I'll be done even long before this line's done. I have a coupon. I use her all the time. <laughs> he has a, did, did he have a coupon? Did Alan have a he coupon? A free coupon. The manager basically <laughs> told him no and get out of here and was real rude to him. Wow. And then called security. They have him said, escorted. I want, your, I want your name. And the guy said, I'm not giving you my name. But Alan said, well, then call security. Security comes down to the buffet. They take him out. They give him his name. Look at this. They escort him out. He goes to VIP services, writes out right a complaint. <laughs> they give him a, a comp to go eat at the pasta place over there. Mm-hmm. He sees the two people that were in line with him that didn't get to eat. He says, were you going to pay for this meal? And they said, yeah. He says, no, 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 come with me. He drags them down to the VIP. Wow. Makes them file a complaint with the guy's name on it. And he got a call today from the end that they fired him. Wow, Alan Kessler pulling the Pulling weight. away. Kessler over the, the man, by the way, are you aware, aware that Alan Kessler can't even remember the last time he ate non-comp food? Probably not. No. No. That's that's a long way away. There was wow. an incident about a week ago where he bought his own french fries at McDonald's. <laughs> but they were cold, and he, so he filled out a survey. <laughs> and the manager of McDonald's has been calling him ever since. So he actually turned the last time he paid for food into comedy. Oh, unbelievable. That's Alan Kessler, everybody. He's the best. He is amazing. The oh world's greatest. God. Wow. So there you go. So some Alan Kessler Alan stories. Alan Kessler story. you got to love that. Hey, uh, Daniel Coleman has taken the lead on uh, Davidi Suriano in wow. the semifinals. The heads up. Okay, Steve. It was good having Steve, you back. Steve, thank you. Pleasure to meet Pleasure. you. Always. Good. Yeah, run my wife over while you're at it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We don't want that. <laughs> L- oh, look at this guy. Look at this freaking guy. Who's this? You know, Joe, you have skinny legs. Joe, Joe Payne is out of bed. I didn't even know he was going to be down here today. Look, it's Joe. Hey, Joe. He's alive. Hey, guys. How, are you? How about that? Join the walking dead. <laughs> yeah. This place has been like a morgue. Wow, that's unreal. Well, good to see Joe down here. I, I didn't know he was I didn't know he was around. Um, so that's event number 40 not just starting that semifinal on that one. Uh, yeah, we do want to take a look at that event number 39 is my good buddy Ryan LaPlante trying to take that table down, had the lead and a great table draw by the way for him. Uh, What's going on in 3K? Uh, that's the one we're looking at right now. Uh, just underway on that final table. looks like Lane Flack got in a little little war there. Uh, let's see where our chip counts are. Oh, actually, look at this. Sean Dempsey, who is just ahead of Ryan, or behind Ryan, is now just ahead of him. Dempsey right, listed right at $2 million. Uh, LaPlante is at $1.995 million. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's pretty close. I'd say Wait, that's, Nam that's Lee close. Fail. Took a hit. Nam Lee is down to ninth. Uh, Jack and Eddie is in third, $1.2 million. Jacob Schindler, eight seventy five. dollars Takashi Yagura. 829, Ryan Olisar has fallen down to sixth place at 712. Lane Flack down 308,000 list level. He's at 600,000 trying to hang on. Andrew Becker 412, Nam Lee at 332. By the way, Dash Dudley incorrectly checking in on his MyStack app. He was not 10th in this tournament. What was he? I don't He wasn't in it. Or if he was, he wasn't anywhere near there. Oh. So you got to be careful that MyStack app. Raymond, will you put you should put yourself in the uh, in the one drop with the my stack app. Maybe that's what you know? Bobby Belon did. <laughs> it's just a yeah, it's just a fake. It's a my stack app fake. That, that's pretty good. My stack app. So right now, Dempsey and Laplante broken away from the pack. We'll see if uh, 
if Ryan can hang on there. Look at that. They got James Casey and Jim Casey. Is that those brothers or something? I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm guessing they're probably the same guy. See, that's the MyStack app logo right there. Yep. That tells you we screwed, we screwed up. up. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Um, what do you think about this MyStack bullshit? I like it. Don't it. Really work, I like it. It's all right. By the way, Linda Johnson's coming over it, and I wonder if Linda has a couple minutes because I, I have a question or two I want to ask Linda. Linda, Let's get Linda do you have, over do you have here. a couple Let me minutes? Okay. Yeah. I got. I, I have some. I have some pointed questions I want to ask Linda. I I I gotta I because I gotta know. I I'm seriously gonna ask this question right now. You're going to get an honest answer, whatever Why you does ask. Dale Negreanu hate the TDA so much? I don't believe Daniel hates the TDA. Oh, I um, believe he does. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, well uh, um, I can't understand it. I mean, it's so good for poker, and anything that's good for poker, he should like. Um, I think maybe one reason he hates it is because he doesn't read the rules, and he doesn't know what they are. For instance, the other day in his You're moving a column, little close to that mic there, Linda. In his column. He's sliding. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, everything he said about the TDA was false. Every single thing. He mm -hmm. was saying, this shouldn't be an automatic penalty. This shouldn't. And he gave examples of automatic penalties that are not automatic penalties. So, obviously, he just doesn't know. But I don't believe he hates us regardless. Do you realize what he said in his blog? Did you see that? I did. Calling yeah. a you know, Nazi-like behavior? Yes. Yeah. Did and, you and see he, that? And, and I really hope, you know, Daniel's a big man. I hope he's, he can retract that. I'm actually going to talk with him about it because, um, you know, I think jumping to conclusions on that, you know, once I read Alan's blog, and Alan was there, she witnessed it, and, you know, I think that uh, Daniel might uh, hopefully take back some of the words he said. There's no, there's no Nazi. Oh, about the TD, calling the TDA Nazi. Yeah, well, oh, uh, the term calling, calling yeah, and calling tournament Dave directors Land. and de yeah. facto yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Daniel and I are buddies. You know, we, we hug it out all the time. So, um, I, you know, if he does hate the TDA, I know he doesn't relate it down personally to the people involved. So, um, I, I'm going to be changing his mind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can we do that on the air? I will You've be got happy to drag to talk him, to him down here, and I, I'm gonna. We're gonna. I don't mind debating him on air. Absolutely. We're gonna put so. the podiums up. Yeah, and, let's and let the, you guys. It's, let it's you guys fine. go at it. I'll give him it's the fine. one that's busted. It's. it's <laughs> so, um, I. He is opinionated. Yeah, yeah, he's very know, opinionated, and, 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 and he's and 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 he's usually very very smart. You know, uh, I'm surprised that he's making statements that are such. So incorrect, you know. For example, like he was on Poker After Dark, blasting the TDA for the show one, show both rule. Well, that's never been a TDA rule. I would never even stand for that. I don't like the rule myself. But he's blaming the TDA for it, and I'm like, so obviously it just seems like he hasn't ever read the rules. He hates you guys. <laughs> he does not hate he us. Hates you. He doesn't hate us. He always throws <laughs> gadgets at the TDA, but he throws a lot. Yeah, no, he he loves us. He really does. So he's just disguising it. I think he need, I think so. he needs to come on the show, and I'm challenging you right now, Daniel. Uh -huh. You need to come on the show, and you need to hug it out with everybody at the top of the TDA. He, yeah, every one not, of them. I'm, I'm, I, th I think I'm he needs to give a big so. big kiss on the cheek to Dave Lamb too you know what I want to do all I want to see is his abs did you see his oh my god I, I saw him the other day he pulled his shirt up and I'm like where did those come from you didn't have those a year ago so he has been working out like crazy paint. so so if he'll show Body his paint. abs I'll come and uh, debate him how about that so. well, well, he's, he's got to get rid of that shiny purple yeah. shirt that he was wearing or jacket he was wearing for yeah, heads up. I wasn't, yeah that, that, was, was, that wasn't a good look necessarily no. but, but there's there's only one person he, this building he might have lost purple. a bet you don't know why he was wearing no. <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. Okay. See, I can, see, I can carry purple, Daniel. You know what? I can't even talk about how people dress because I'm certainly not uh, the clothes horse. You know, no. But uh, but he does look hot, and uh, um, and I like Daniel, and I'll be happy to uh, tell him I think when it comes to TDA that he's full of shit um, because I think he is. But I don't really believe. I think if he really understood the rules, like. I agree with him on so many things, and he thinks we disagree. Like he's saying, this should be a warning, not an auto penalty. Daniel, wake up! It is a warning. You know, yeah. I mean, we agree on stuff. You know, um, you know what was it he was saying was auto penalties? Like if you check the nuts in last position, shouldn't be an auto penalty. Well, no kidding, it isn't an auto penalty. You know, if I've got an older guy who overlooks his hand, I'm not going to give him a penalty. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. he's not trying to do anything. A warning, maybe. If it's a 25-year-old kid who's who's in a pot with his best friend and he checks the 
nuts on the river, knowing better, then he will get a penalty. But you know, there's, there's, I think that people can and should be held to different standards based on, you know, what their real intentions are. And that's why the TDA, when we set the rules up, almost everything was something may be worthy of a penalty. Mm -hmm. You might get a penalty for this, you, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, because you have to oh, have a little bit of flexibility When he talked about um, whatever it was, he gave two examples, and neither one of them are automatic penalties. So <laughs> he needs to do a little research on that. But um, on the other hand, I think Dan was really good for poker. And, poker. and you know, like the, I said yesterday in my blog, we need characters, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel is a character. Daniel is colorful, and he's great with the public, and this is very important. We need people like that. We don't need assholes. And at this point in my life, I don't mind calling them out because, you know, I, I'm just sick of it. Uh, you know, this, this crap yesterday with uh, Brandon Cantu, Brandon and, Cantu. you know, mm -hmm. why don't they throw him out and just get, you know, I don't even know the guy, but I've read his, you know, when he tweeted last year about, he said, Rio dealers should all die. I mean, really, how do you even let a guy like that come into your place? He's obviously, you know, not. He's not a nice he's, he's, have some with him. Yeah, he's, not he's a nice well, I don't even know him, but he's not a nice person. I, I'd take your word for it. He certainly doesn't across, come across that way. And it's like, we need, we need nice people in poker. I cannot tell you, you know, I, I run across people that I played poker with years ago, and I'm like, well, why aren't you playing anymore? Because I can't stand to be around people telling me how badly I play, mm -hmm. you know? People are so worried about throwing out one or two bad guys, and what they don't realize is that those bad guys are keeping uh, hundreds and hundreds of good people away, away from poker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, You're hurting the game. Yeah. Now, speaking of good guys, uh, the reason I just walked by here is I went to sweat Ryan LaPlante at the yes. final table. Um, now, here's a role model for poker. This Agreed. kid is amazing. We need people like that. He's colorful, too. And, and that's what we need. We need characters, but not jerks. So, have, am, I, am I done with my soapbox? That was good. <laughs> So that was good. You guys are doing such a good job. Um, I, you know, I, I love the discussion you had the other day about the Mattisau thing mm -hmm. where, I mean, you put it absolutely beautifully. Yes. You are his friend. And, and uh, you know, we do need to focus on people who have some issues. Right. And, and right. you know, issues. absolutely. You know, it's. Uh, I love the guy. I go to his house. And everything, I love I Mike, too. But, but yeah, but he's. The first to jump in yeah. His face. Yeah. I was the first to jump in his face and told him he owes David Lamb, he, apology. Yeah, he does. And said, is he going to do that? that? But, and I said, all these fanboys and yeah. Daniel and everybody yeah. jumping, jumping on the side. bandwagon. Before, Alan Kessler, without knowing the facts, I jumped on Alan Kessler yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. I said, Alan, you do not know the facts. You do not know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. You should not butt in. And then Alan Jeffrey, I told Wrote her, the just, column. Yeah. write the column. Uh -huh. She was you know, there. I stand by you. You yeah. write the table. Write the column. Let the world know what really happened. Yeah. yeah but, and I, but, she did. But you know what, though? You know, I believe that, that um, Mike could probably last um, pass a lie detector test I mean right. like, like yeah. I believe that he yes, he, he sees he it this way you know right. I mean he, he thinks, thinks he's that right. he, he thinks he's right yeah right. you know he's not trying to be you know um, a jerk right. he believes that he's right in it and but I, enough people have said that that wasn't and right I go over Mike Mattis all house and the first thing I tell Mike is, I love Mike hey yeah. have you had your meds yeah uh -huh. good and for you you, you are a meds, true friend you are a true friend because you're helping him. yeah you got to help him yeah yeah over his house yeah when he's in his depressed state he calls me and I go yeah. over there and make sure everything's okay yeah help him straighten up and stuff like that he's a great friend yeah, yeah. but I'm oh yeah the people that don't enable Mike I'm the one that right the person that gets in his face because you know when he's wrong exactly so many people tell him he's right Right. And they jump to his side. Yeah, and they want and to be in the, the movie and they you know and right. you know, yeah. David Lamb came up to me and he, he gave me a handshake. I was at the table playing the three K he gave me <laughs> What's a handshake. Handshake. And then yeah. he walked away, and then he came back and gave me a hug. Yeah. No. Well, what they Brandon, what they did to him was terrible. You know what? Few. I love well, that Mike Mike Sexton came out saying what a good floor he was, right. and Gavin Smith, and all these people we've known him for years. <laughs> yes. It was that was such a sad situation, and I hate that he was getting thrown under the bus yes. when he was not the one who made the final decision. He called for backup, and I even we tweeted that out because he would never have right, defended himself. Right. Dave would never have come on and said, "Hey guys, you know it wasn't my call." Yeah. He was he would have taken the heat and. Yeah. Gone down. And this is, you know, he's not going to be here much longer. You know, he is a role model for tournament directors, in my opinion. Unbelievable and, um, you know, I'm a glad that people have started to support him. I love him. So. I know him 15 years. Yeah. Never, never saw him out of line. No, he's on great. A and you know what? And, and superstars, he do give a little leeway. So it, Mike Manisal really forced his hand. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah he, he you know, no other choice. People don't like to give penalties. Right. You know, it's, no. it's not good when you have, you have to give a penalty. Who wants to give a pro? 
high profile player. Right, knowing movie. that it's probably going to come back. Yeah. Come yeah. Yeah, no, but uh, but I'm glad that you know that things did come out, and I'm glad people realize that Dave was not the final call on this. I do like the protocol they have here of when you make you know if if people protest something, then you call for backup, right. and you get you know so that you're not the only one making a decision mm -hmm. here, and that's what he did, and uh, I think that's a great protocol that they have in place at the World Series of Poker. Yeah, that's pretty good. I want to throw something out related to that to you. Of course, uh, you founder of Card Player Magazine, who's a journalist. <laughs> okay, uh, we I did not. Oh, I'm sorry, owner, but sorry. Owner, it was in its owner, infancy. But, uh, let me ask you this question. We saw a report on Poker News about mm -hmm. that story okay. that was pretty much jumping the gun fanboy material, mm -hmm. which, I, by, by the way, I've been getting laser eyes because I criticized mm -hmm. that author on that. Other websites uh, saying things like Brandon Cantu got in a fight with Jeff Lissandro, and that never happened. They got in an argument, but they never mm -hmm. got in a fist fight or anything like that. And... You know, we've seen some other stories where people have been just not getting the facts right lately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do we do about that with poker journalism when people are sensationalizing things and not telling the full stories and not doing their jobs and in investigating? Because all it's doing is causing trouble. Like for Dave Lamb, for example, uh -huh. yeah. got him run through the mud and, you know, in other situations that, you know, are creating Un, the, the attention that we don't want to get. Yeah, I think that if the responsible journalists need to make retractions when they're wrong. You know, I don't. I, I think that when they initially make the report, this is what they've been told, maybe, and so they're reporting it. And I think it should be reported as I did not see this. However, I was told this. And then if they find out that that isn't the the correct thing, then they need to come back on and say, subsequent, I have done some investigating and I found out that my initial report was wrong. And uh, you know, and here's what really happened. And I don't. And I, I don't think there's that makes them bad I think that makes them good if they don't do a retraction when they know that they were wrong then they're just not responsible responsible journalists yeah we're so, all human yeah, yeah. people make, human, mistakes. make yeah. mistakes yeah absolutely yeah because I know I've said things that were I'm wrong on air and you know when I when I did I corrected them <laughs> you know you got to be willing to admit a mistake yeah. like like Raymond Davis <laughs> so well uh, you know I, I think you guys are both great I think um, I like your ethic I, I like you know that you tell it like it is and uh, you know just all I can say is Bless you. Bless you. And I'm out of here. I didn't mean to, to go on a rant Thanks. like oh, this. Oh, that's okay. And, you know, if, if Daniel wants to discuss TDA uh, on air, I'll do it. If he wants to discuss it in private, I'll do it. Oh, no, um, let's do it on the air. <laughs> I will. No, we but, have to. Uh, we yeah, have to. I will. You know, I'm, I, I'm a Daniel fan. You know, I love Daniel, I Daniel too. Fan, Absolutely. So, and, um, you know, mainly I just love how good he is with the public. You know, it doesn't matter what what he's doing. He will stop and look you in the yes. eye, take a picture. You know, um, I've I've had you know been a lot of celebrity events where, you know, and some of them, you know, you ask for a picture and they'll they'll put their arm around you, but they'll keep talking to their buddy and they don't. Yeah. Look, he's a poker you know, man. he is he's the really face poker. He deserves to have he's the fan really following that he has, but he does need to get it straight um, because when he says something, people, people believe him. Exactly. And um, he's not it. always right. Yeah, because know? that so, was actually a lot of what fueled the Madness House situation. It was Daniel came out right away right, and, right. And, and blasted, uh, and, and blasted sure Dave and I'm sure Daniel was reporting what he heard you know yeah. um, you know, I'm sure that's what Mike told him and, and that's what Mike told me I had a discussion with Mike about it and the way he related to me you know was that maybe uh, the penalty was too harsh but then after hearing from other people about what really happened you know I hate to say it Mike but it, it wasn't and he's lucky you know, it wasn't worse yeah I mean <laughs> we, we, we need to have civility as, as Alan said that's her quote at the table you know we need to uh, you know, this thing about let's bring the fun back to poker. Now, that pisses me off, too, because poker is fun. Yes. I have been having fun here at the World Series, not always at the Rio because it was downtown, for 34 years, consecutive years. I always have fun here. So, you know, I don't think we need to have tantrums to have fun. I don't nope. think we need to, you know, we have fun. I have fun by meeting people, talking to people, playing cards. It's a mental challenge for me. You know, I love to play poker. Can't wait to play my next hand of poker. I love it, and I have fun doing it. When I don't have fun is when uh, they allow people to be disruptive and carry and on and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, so. it's so unacceptable. His action, it's so action unacceptable. Yeah, series. yeah. How many incidents can one person have? Yeah, and you know what? You know what? I met. I was on a flight one time, and and the flight attendant was Brandon's mother. And um, oh, she wow. saw I was wearing a poker thing, and so so that's how the discussion came up. And she said, um, she said, oh, my son's in the poker world. I said, well, what's his name? And she said, Brandon. 
Brandon can too. Now I was not about to tell her, yeah. you know, oh, because oh, I. Oh, well, that but, would have been harsh. But, but seriously, oh, would he? Wow. You know, would he? Would he like people? Uh, she's in a service industry. Now he has belittled the entire staff, saying they should die. He's put right. this in writing. You know, how would he like it if somebody said that about flight attendants? You know, yes. should it's just yes. terrible to to do that. So, yes. but uh, and she seemed like and a really this, nice lady. And this I, a man that has uh, accumulated great wealth, wealth through poker. poker yeah, world. exactly. And uh, you know, he didn't blow it uh -huh. in the poker world. He blew it outside the uh -huh. poker world. Yeah. The poker world don't owe him nothing. Yeah. And, and That's right. They yeah. Don't get a lot for him. Yeah. You know, I, I'm you just know? a golden rule person. You know, you can call me old fashioned, whatever, but like you know, just treat people I'm nicely. School, and yeah. you know, old school sometimes. You know, I like a lot of things about new school. Um, but and, and and you know, like new school Ryan. You know, Ryan has respect for yes. people. He's mm -hmm. you know, he came to our Wednesday group and for two hours he talked. The day I met, I just met him on your show. Yeah, he's on our show. Yeah, and I invited him to come talk to our group for two hours. He held everyone's attention. He was he was just delightful. And you know, he's been back since a few times. And you know, so I you know. We need that's what we need in, in the poker world, and he's young, so yeah, but we he, need more growth. yeah, we, we yeah, need we need growth. we need respect, we need, yeah, not, not yeah, you know, diminish it exactly. So, you know? I love the way you guys think, and <laughs> I'm out of here. Thank you for inviting me to join you. Thank you, and thanks okay. for the, and thanks Pleasure for the peanut butter cup. Uh -huh. All right, those, All those peanut butter cups are so good. <laughs> oh, okay, I will make more. God. <laughs> You had the peanut butter cups? I got the peanut butter cups again. Oh, thank you, Linda. Raymond's hopping back in. What a great, great guest. I know. I love Linda. She's so she's, good for She's poker. amazing, yeah. She's an amazing woman. She tells it as it is. Yeah. Yeah? She sure does. Hey, we got to get one more commercial break in before uh, the show ends. If one I don't do it now, it's not going to really make sense to do it like five minutes to go. So we're going we're gonna to jam one more commercial break in, and uh, we'll come back on the Mark Oak Show. What do you think, Raymond? Wonderful. Why don't we have any sponsorship from Spearmint Rhino? Make the call. I gotta become your Get agent and go yes. to these guys. Will you please do it? And Jesus yes. Christ, Chevrolet. Raymond, and all I'm this in. Type of stuff. I'm in. Jesus I, Christ. I, I, I will take a lesser percentage of more than a, a larger percentage of Maybe nothing. Maybe I'll buy half the show. Well, we'll talk. Me and Sean. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Huh? We'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll get the sponsors. Get Chevy. Yes. Spearmint Rhino. Yes. Okay. <laughs> God, look at this guy. He's acting like he's having to twist my arms. Like I'm saying, I'm not going to say no to. I don't say no to anybody. Yeah, let's get some of the spearmint rhino girls up in here. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> let's see. Right back. You know, let's get MMA this. Let's get this party the going. World series of fighting. We turn to jump Las in. Vegas Saturday, June 21st at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Three world championship fights. Women's strawweight champion Jessica Aguilar versus Emmy Fujino. Georgie Karakanyan defends his featherweight title against Rick Glenn. And David Branch goes head-to-head -head against Jesse Taylor for the middleweight championship. Saturday, June 21st at the Joint. For tickets, go to AXS.com and the Hard Rock Box Office or WSOF.com. RunGoodGear.com is one of poker's premier online stores for apparel. Their mission is to provide poker players with stylish and comfortable clothes for their daily grind. You've probably seen Run Good Gear at the World Series of Poker through Run Good Poker Pro Rob Salaburo or around the country through the WSOP circuit. Today, RunGoodGear.com is the place to go to gear up for the poker fell. So go there now with the promo code HOKE, that's H-O-K-E, for 10% off your entire online purchase. Remember Hoke. Now, go gear up. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off-tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom-designed table that reflects your style and game. Off-tilt makes it easy to design a truly one-of-a-kind custom poker table that'll give you a home table advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom crafted, furniture quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.offtiltpokertables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262 490 We'll show you why off-tilt is the only way to play. 
sports bettors. Tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. Call now for today's free winner. 1-855-489-2700. That's 1-855-489-2700. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch coming soon. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. And for more details, make sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook at Final Nine Comic. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? 
Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, we're back here on the Mark Hoke Show. This is my wife, Chris. She decided to invade the space till Joe hops over here. Good time, Joe. No, Joe, hurry, Joe. Take your time. You gotta talk into the microphone too. I told Joe to take his time. Yeah, don't don't take your time. Joe. Hurry, Joe. Hurry, Joe. Anytime, Joe. I don't want to interrupt you. I was just crashing the show. Yeah, you're crashing the show. No, we already had we had Umberto Brennis crashing the show. And now, by the way, it, this is great because we had Umberto Brennis over here just a little while waving the Costa Rican flag. Who we made in, who we made fun of? Oh, not fun of light of the other day. Because he was sleeping in the run good. Well, he's he is he's, he's, he's he out is, cold again. He's asleep and draped in but, the Costa Rican flag. Of course, they had that big upset win today. I believe. But you do realize that he's so tired because he's cashed, I believe, eight, eight times. times. Eight already. You know that's a long walk to the uh, cash out window, and then filling your pockets with the money. So now is he in the running for a Player of the Year based upon these eight caches? No. Not even close, huh? No, not really. Because no, they're not George real Dancer, deep. George Danzer is currently in runaway mode right now. Wow, really? Thanks to that second win last night. This has been the year of, uh, and I've been away and kind of sick for the last week, but this is, seems to me from, you know, my just trying to keep up as much as I can, um, the year of the just continuous repeat performances back mm-hmm. to back to back. I mean, even Ted Forrest was uh, deep in the, um, the seven-card uh, tournament uh, the other night that when I – when I checked, there was like 13 plays left, and he was still yeah. right in the mix there. You know, yeah, I got to tell you one one thing that Dutch Boyd said to me um, when we were out celebrating his his third bracelet victory. Very nice for Dutch. Very very cool. Uh, he said that it's a unique time in poker, and it's a great time to be a player that is you know came into the game around the, you know 2007 2008. Uh, or before that, because these guys have gotten to play so many hands because of online poker, and now this current young crop of players that's coming up, the guys that are like you know 21, 22, 23. Don't have that. Unless they leave, have left the country, yeah, don't have that. So the experience factor that the young players made up to come in and, and you know try and beat the guys like Doyle Brunson and some of the other you know not try they and, did you know and Amarillo Slim and so right. on. Now that advantage is flipped, and this this group of players, until they can get those that experience, are going to be now behind these guys again. So it's kind of like you got a locked in group of players that have so much experience, and it's showing and here I was at the say, World absolutely Series. Absolutely, is showing. I don't think I don't think any other year previous to the internet boom has seen so many uh, same players running as deep and very, very deep in multiple tournaments this year. It's incredible. Yeah. It's really, uh, that's why I thought the, the race for player of the year was going to be very, very tight because there are a lot of players who have multiple caches, uh, multiple final tables, multiple bracelets. It was the until, year of, yeah. until George Danger said, Octung baby. Well, and the, 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 the only day of this week that I was here is when you mentioned something about Joe Cotta was the last main event winner. Um, there hasn't been a main event winner who's won another bracelet since since Joe Cotta, and that's now... Well, since Mortensen, but yeah, Cotta, yeah, and yeah, then Cotta, yeah, win, Cotta, Cotta just won one the other night. Right, which so is... So brings that jinx. I mean, yeah, that was 14 will, years, right? Yeah. 2000. Uh, Carlos yeah, Mortensen, was, in, Carlos yeah, Mortensen, was in 2000, right? Uh, 2001, I believe. I think was Ferguson 2001? won 2000. Was, uh, Ferguson, and then, okay. And then Mortensen won the second bracelet in 03, and that's right. been it. It's been a long time coming. Long time coming. Hey, real quick, let's take a look what's happening, by the okay, way. Okay, let's let's we got, do it. We got some cool stuff going on. Uh, Dealer's Choice six-handed event, and this is so ironic, by the way. Of who's near the top of this leaderboard? Thirty-six players left. By the way, there's the 10K horse champ, the box, the sly Logging fox. By. 
Uh, Arthur Morris is the leader, 134, and Brandon Cantu's in second place. Really? Wow. <laughs> he, gets in a, he gets in a near fist fight in this tournament and now uh, is in second. Perry Green in third, Aaron Schaff in fourth, and Maria Ho is in fifth. And, of course, she caught a little crap a couple tournaments ago for being accused of angle shooting, which was kind of ridiculous. But, you know, that, that story didn't get reported much either. Drama uh, loves. Why, why am I the one breaking all these stories, Joe? You brought, I saw the story this, this afternoon on the two Queen of Hearts on the board. Mm-hmm. On the, and gaming came in and ruled nothing was wrong. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that was a hell of a story. Jack, oh, I was walking by and I grabbed them. That's what happens when you show up here at 730 in the morning. You tend to see the people at a time you can talk to them when they're not, you know, they're not conscious enough you know, yet to say, no, I'm not talking to you if about If the it. game was in San Francisco, two Queen of Hearts being at the same table would be more <laughs> most likely to happen. Joe. Joe, be nice. Shame on you. Frank Casella in six, and I can't wait till the July Fourth party at Frank's place. May I'll get you in on that? Oh, thing. hey, hey, I'm it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a really nice Halloween or uh, Fourth of July party. Jacob Boyle in seventh, Marco Johnson eighth, Gabriel Nassif still chasing that elusive bracelet. Ninth, Robert Mizraki has now moved up to tenth. Uh, Jen Harmon's down to twelfth, but she's still hanging around there. So Jen Harmon looking good. Daniel Adima. Sean Buchanan is in 18th, Melissa Burr in 21st. Uh, Bill Chen, Todd Brunson still hanging around in there. Justin Gardenhire, Run Good Gear Pro, a frequent hanger-outer here in the Run Good Gear well, Lounge. Can't be too frequent. Umberto's got the couch locked up. And right now it's, yeah, right <laughs> now that chair's done. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's where the uh, 36 players left in the dealer's choice. Now, do we know what they did with the gentleman? <laughs> Excuse me, who was eliminated with the two Queen of Hearts? Do we know if they... Absolutely nothing. He's not getting his buy-in back. <coughs> wow, really? I thought that that's what the least they would do was give him nope, his buy-in back. they are doing nothing. Nothing. And to be honest with you, do you, while, do you feel that's okay? Given the situation, yes, I do. Because I, here's, here's, my, here's my problem with the whole thing. If you've got nine people in a dealer at the table... Okay. None of them sees that, including the player. Now, I can tell you that whenever I've seen, I mean, like, if, I, if I'm watching, looking at cards, and I only see a little nick or a bend about this big, I'm on it like white on rice. There's literally a queen. Here, we got it. We got, if, let's, let's just do, you know, I'm going to give everybody the visual here for a second okay. in case they didn't see the picture. All right, so, so here's your visual. Okay, we've got, we've got. Two community, two community cards. Here was the third community card. Right. Okay. So here's your third community card. There's your turn card, and there's your river card. Right. Queen, so here's queen. the queen and yeah, the queen. There was, there was a, there right. was a buffer in between. There was a small buffer in between, but they were kind of close to each other. But they weren't next to each other. Dude, took a picture. He took a picture of this, Joe. And he still didn't see it. He had to be notified hours later by his buddy on Twitter who saw the picture and blew it up and said, hey, um, did you notice there were two queens of hearts in there? So he, he, He's penal- we, he should be penalized. for. I mean, they should all be penalized. for. So he took a picture of it to show this is the hand I got eliminated yeah, on? Yeah, because he, got, he lost full house to quads. Oh. So he wanted to show all his friends that it, you know, he got devastated on the river. So they actually stopped the game and took a picture of the hand. And no one noticed. And nobody. The dealer <laughs> or the other or no players did not notice. Nobody noticed. Wow, I didn't know that. See, I just yeah. read briefly your little description that gaming was notified, came and ruled no wrongdoings, and I was like, okay. Yeah, they did. Cause, wow. uh, well, it was, it was interesting because Jack came, when I talked to Jack this morning, he said, you would be surprised that things, it's not a massive frequency that things like that happen, but it, those things do happen. They reuse and, decks. Yeah. And, they, you know, at the end of the night, they... Dealers, after working a long shift, are putting their deck, decks back together again. It's very possible that a queen of hearts got misinterpreted for a queen of diamonds. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's probably what happened. Probably. So, I bet you yeah, the but queen they were, of diamonds is probably missing from that deck. Or else is in there. And, you know, just maybe maybe it got stuck in with a, you know, in a shuffler or, uh, you know, they had some no, decks it, and were going through some decks. I don't well, know. It, I mean, there's, if, there's, if, there's, if, there were, if, if the deck was, if the deck had that one extra card, once they put it in a shuffler, uh, I don't believe she yeah. would have picked it up. Yeah. So I don't think I don't they're know, using shufflers. Some, I think it's all yeah. hand dealt. So. Yeah, so somebody just boo booed. You know, but they were playing with that deck for a while. Everybody. Well, uh, I had a uh, similar situation in a live cash game in, uh, in Laughlin where 
I had. Uh, they have live cash games in Laughlin? No, uh, once in a while. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I believe the name of the casino was um, Edgewater. And I had the Ace of Diamonds in my hand. With, I forget what the other card was. And the flop came, Ace of Diamonds. So they would. <laughs> so we played the hand out, and at the end of the hand, I comically turned it over and said, uh, uh, I got the. Uh, Three, three aces. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two of them and uh, they stopped the game immediately. And I was losing a small amount of money, 30-something dollars in a game. And um, I asked them to refund my money because they couldn't figure out. They went back with the tape, and they never saw anyone either bringing the card back into the game yep. or the deal changed. The deck was fine. So they eventually, at first they said, no, we can't do that. I'm like, well. I'm playing with a tampered deck, so to speak. They actually did wind up refunding, bought me dinner and refunded my uh, thirty something dollars that I was down. So yeah, I'm, well, I'm kind of surprised that they did. I, that yeah. they, they didn't consider doing something for this guy, but generally, Jack said they slammed the door. So wow. Oh well, what are you gonna do? The I, next, I, the how next about time, this? I don't think pay you, attention. I don't think you've heard the last of that. By the way, you you might be right on that. <laughs> I personally have no problem with the guy not getting his money back if. But no, you know, you know, Raymond Davis said something about for once, uh, uh, Alan Kessler, Chainsaw, didn't know all the facts. I, I never knew that was possible. I thought Alan Kessler always knew all the facts. He usually does. Alan digs. I wonder what I wonder what Alan's take on this the two Queen of Hearts is. You know, we'll have to find out. When he, he's always he's kind of well, he's scared right now because Raymond Davis put that video up of him chasing him down about his oh, World Series money right now. Yeah, it wasn't good. Oh, I didn't even see that. Is that is that on uh, Facebook or Twitter or? Yeah, it's on Facebook. Yeah, check it out. Um, <laughs> by the way, uh, Joe Payne uh, from Casino Examiner. It was David Matthews, formerly the Anthony Curses Las Vegas advisor, advisor, that accused Maria Ho of the angle shooting. Oh, David, I know David Matthews. So, so there you go. Wow, and can, maybe you can bring me up to speed on that because I've been kind of I, out of it. I what barely happened? got what? to read the story at all. I saw a video where Maria was said this was a bunch of crap, and it was on two plus two. So I, and of course, I. I had to go on two plus two today briefly today, but it did really, that, did really that pain hurt you? me. Did that pain it, you? It, it hurt me. It was like you know. Well, you it, had the owner you know, like, on. Two you know, weeks like ago. When, you know, like when you have a when sunlight hits a vampire. You know, you know the reaction. You, see, you watch True Blood at all? You see no, that? I, no, but yeah, it's pretty nasty. Was, was and that it, was what was happening to me. I, your, I had to go. Did on your there. computer screen start to shake when you uh, logged little, on? A little bit. I smelled. I smelled fire and brimstone, and now, at that would, point, would, I had to pull away. Would this have anything to do with your? Your close association with Dutch? Um, Tiny bit? Aside from that, no. So you had a problem with 2 plus 2 before I, I the, Dutch, the Dutch yeah, incident? I did. And Going so, way back. It's a great story. Okay. It's a great story. Um, I'll tell it some well, other time. You know, I, but I give you credit, even though you have this, this rock in your shoe about 2 plus 2, you graciously allowed Mason I did. to invite himself... Yeah, onto the show. He did invite him on the show. He, he that was that was the rudest thing I think I've yeah, ever usually had. Usually, to get on the Mark Coke show, well, either Mark or Nate or myself will make a phone call and say, "Hey, would you be interested?" I don't think, well, you know, even, as far as I know, I don't think anybody's ever in, kind of invited themselves on the show. I mean, I've had people ask to come on the show, yeah, nicely, but not with. Do you know who I not, am? Not. Hey, look hey, at you me. You know who I am? I got. I got two. I got, I got two minutes for you. Senior I'm champ, how are you, sir? Let me on your show. I, Dan, I haven't got a chance to personally grab Dan Heimiller, yeah. Dan's great here. Great job, by the way. Thanks. Should we, great, great job. Dan, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? No, you aren't real lucky, I'm Dan. I'm PLO. Uh -huh. I got about 10 minutes left on uh, my dinner break. You want to jump in? Do you want, you want, you want to give me two? Yeah. Can you give me two? Can I do, can I, I'm, I'm trying to get followers on Twitter. So oh, okay. I got, a, I got a promo on Twitter. Um, okay. I'm Good. giving away 2% of my final event. To one random Twitter follower. That'll be me, right? And it's, no? uh, yeah, real. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm and, just, uh, well, Mark, I'm going to change my name to random. Mark will decide who that random Twitter follower is, apparently. Wow, okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, and you need to retweet the promotion tweet. Uh, every day I put a tweet that I'm giving away 2%. So retweet that tweet. Um, and then I'm going to use some random number, maybe baseball scores or weather. 
numbers, so it's something published so it's to make sure it is random. Yep. Or you could use random.com. That's a no shenanigans. shenanigans. Yeah, no shenanigans and hijinks there. There was a there. foreman the other day back east, and, and uh, that was it was funny. He announced over the intercom, no more shenanigans. <laughs> And I, 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 that, you know, I haven't heard that since I was a kid. I use shenanigans all the time. See, huh? see I, I'm, I'm, I'm in on the shenanigans. Yeah, I heard that about. Well, I did hear that about ten times during the seniors tournament. Nice. What, well, what's your Twitter, Dan? Just so everybody knows. Oh, uh, Dan High Miller, and High Miller is spelled correctly, which no one knows how to spell that. It's H E I M I L L E R. So D A N H E I M I L L E R. All right. So there you go, chance so to pick up some money on Dan. Yeah, hopefully. And I just, yeah, I'm just trying to pick up followers, and and uh, I don't know why I'm picking up followers. One day, I guess I could, I use them to maybe overthrow a small country. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Maybe someplace with nice don't beaches. Try, don't try Iraq. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was probably someone who picked up followers. Uh, from Mark's show here. <laughs> it's probably... Did you have any Iraqis so, on your show? So I'm, so I'm being blamed. I have been well, heard, listened to in Iran, by the way. What? I have been listened to in Iran. Okay, good. Believe well, it or maybe not. It's, uh, there's, there's all kinds. I've got, I've got Ethiopians and all sorts of people listening. 100, 100, over 100 countries, Dan, believe it or not. Wow. It's pretty shocking. I have followers in probably close to... I might be approaching 100 countries. I, when I, I did nice. one of those Twitter maps... And it's cool. It's cool. You got, oh, my God, there's people in Africa. There's people in, uh, in Australia and China that are it's, followers twi- following me on Twitter. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Well, yeah, well, you know why they're following you now, or at least recently, because they want to borrow the, money. They want to borrow money. Borrow money, but but <laughs> <laughs> you did win the seniors championship, and a big congratulations to you on that. And another big win for you here, and you've been just on a tear this uh, this year. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad score either. Congratulations. So tell us a little bit about that run through the seniors event. Um, the run was fun. I, I don't know. It's hard to remember it all. It's been a week ago. Let's see. Um, <laughs> I, I guess That's I funny. just played pretty well, and, I, and, I, and they didn't catch me. I guess um, uh, some interesting hands. Um, the last hand was interesting. I had to do six offsuit. Um and flopped straight. Um, boy, I have to I have to go over the video to find it, figure out how I got in the hand with that. I must have it must have been a limped pot. And then I believe he might have bet the flop. I called, and on the turn he checks. I think I bet a little bit bigger. He calls, and um, so it, it came out to three, four, five on the flop. I had a do six off. And the turn was something like a queen, and the end was an ace. So he checks the end. Uh, or was I first? I don't remember. But I bet small. Actually, I bet less than the other two bets. Because I, it dawned on me that, geez, if he has an ace or queen, he would have he would have bet. He would have uh he would have fired that, uh, away. Yeah. Fired away on the turn or the end. So I figure him for a small pair, and I'm thinking, well, there's two things I can do. I can either get get a small bet called, which I get a little bit a little bit out of it. So I bet actually less than the flop and turn, and then also I could induce a bluff. He might try to bluff it and raise me, in which case I'm sitting there with with the with the a real good straight. Now of course there was a. Uh, a flush card come on the end, but I just don't worry about it because the um, we didn't have a, a the pot's pretty big compared to our stacks, so you don't have to just you just don't worry about a flush is so much. Um, so I did the small bet; he went all in. Now I'm worried a little bit about the flush, <laughs> but the ratio is uh, it's also it's 100 percent necessary to call. And I figured he had a deuce because the ace on the end made a possible straight if you have a deuce. So I was praying he had a deuce. Mm-hmm. I knew the little bet would make the deuce shove. So he shoved, and I'm calling him with a six-high straight, and it turns out he didn't have a deuce. He was on a stone-cold bluff. He figured that small bet, mean, uh, meaning uh, I had only a small pair, and then he was going to try to represent a larger hand and push me out. So yeah. I did a very uh, – it was nice. I, we only played like six hands heads up. It was pretty quick. 
Um, yeah, and and you know, one interesting part about that tournament was you took over the chip lead, you know, pretty pretty early in that turn. You know, when it, you know, somewhat you know, speaking, I don't speaking you were exactly when, you were but I, you I were ahead being chip leader at like fourteen players left. Yeah, 14. and I was and, chip and, leader, and, and I, I think you were leading at the beginning of the day at the. You know, the day before that, too, you, you took the chip lead and just you never looked back. I mean, and, and we've seen a lot of guys blow leads in this thing. You know, what, what's your strategy to making sure that when you get the lead, you keep it? Because I think a lot of kids need to learn that lesson. Hmm. Yeah, well, there's a lot of chip ratio things you can do when you have a lead. I think that uh, uh, things that you can't do when you have a shorter stack. So like, say you have a flush draw with an over, over card. That's good enough to go all in when you've got... When you've got three times as much chip as your opponent, you can pound the pot with like a draw and an overcard, and the other player then is put in a real difficult position. He could have small bottom two pair and muck it because he's af so, so afraid of going broke. So um, that's what a lot of uh, that's I guess that's a technique that a lot of big pros, top notch pros have is that try to get the chip lead early, and sometimes they gamble to do that and then with a chip lead you you've got a lot more op, uh, options in hands mm -hmm. when a small stack you don't have as many options and there's always uh you know you hear about pros throwing away straights or or throwing away two pair or throwing away bottom set because of out of fear um and trying to be cautious and when you got the chip lead you don't have to be cautious or f fearful you just Sometimes you, you could just play a lot more hands. Yeah, but you know, fortunately for you, you played it great. You walked out. Well, you tried to walk out of there with the trophy. They wouldn't let you keep it. You had a great line about the oh, trophy, I, by oh, the way. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, I, I it, it dawned on me why they won't they won't let us take. We they give us a, this uh, golden eagle, a giant golden eagle trophy. It's like a Stanley Cup, and they print our they embroider our names on there or, or engrave our names on there. So. I was thinking maybe they should let us take it home for the year, but they don't let you, they don't they don't they won't do it. And you know the reason is is because they know that if they give uh, they give this a poker player, it's going to end up on eBay in a few months. Yeah, you know. So they they don't they don't just don't trust the poker players. You know they barely let me touch the damn thing. They, <laughs> but I'm going to try to sneak it out of here one day. That's a it's a gorgeous trophy. It is. Oh. Uh, well, actually, I, and I got a good spot. I'm in middle, middle top, so uh, they put my name middle top, so that's excellent. There you go, perfect. Well, Dan, I know you got to get back in there, but I oh, want to. I, I do. Yeah, but congratulations. See, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. So that's all right. Try one more time. Try to get another, one, win another one. There you go. Well, Dan Highmiller joining us here on the Mark Oak Show too. Thanks, Thanks for stopping Mark. by, buddy. And congratulations again. Yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow him on Twitter, Dan Highmiller. Good man. By the way, that person that's got a phone sitting there that's uh, not supposed to be using it in the Run Good Gear Lounge, despite the sign that's there that says, don't use this, they're going to have a fun when I take those chargers away in about uh, five minutes. It's going to suck to be them. Hey, what are you going to do with the phones? Uh, well, you know what You know what the sign says? Turn into security. Turn into security, because I'm not going to be responsible for their phone. John? Good. You playing right now? Okay, good luck, bud. All right. So, um... Very nice. Okay, so bef before we get out of here, I do want to take we a look. We are running at, a little late. Yeah, we are running long. We, we seem to do that when everybody shows up here. Uh, it, it, Never it's complain the jinx. when the show is it's running the jinx. Good. It's the jinx that when I say I'm going to cut out early, everybody pops in Oh, did in you here. say that today? I did. Yeah, so much for that. I did. Well, it makes uh, up for the days you did, though. So. Yeah, I suppose. So four players four players left in the heads up. Uh, looks like uh, 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 Davide Serrano. Serrano has uh, gotten a nice little lead on Daniel Coleman. Scott Davies leading Sam Stein, so trying to get another upset out of that. Boy, that would be a, that would be a huge a big, upset uh, with Stein left. Is there a big chip uh, differential in either of the two matches? Uh, 2.7 to 1.1 for Soriano. Uh, Davies is up 2.1 to 1.69. All right. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a little bit of a lead, but and we all know what can happen. And real quick, on event number 39, want to make sure we mention that one because our good buddy Ryan LaPlante is – trying to win this bracelet uh sean dempsey according to these chip counts two million laplante 1.93 jacob schindler 1.6 ryan jackanetti 1.2 and lane flack trying to hang on in there in fifth place so uh nom lee is in ninth so 
right what now. We got about nine plays left in it. Nine players left. They're on the final table. Oh. It's on WSOP.com, which you're now allowed to watch. We're actually in about a minute or two because we're going to wrap it up. So and then you yeah, can you can go, watch. go you can, you can, can go there and watch that now. All right. So good show, and Joe, it's good to see you. Good to be back. I, I mean, missed you. Not 100 percent yet, but uh, I'm gonna try to make it back here tomorrow. All right. Sounds great. It was uh, it was a long day, but I decided to make an appearance. Well, I appreciate that. You're a good man, Joe. You know, sometimes you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you. <laughs> this week, man, <laughs> the, bear, gobble, gobble. The, the bear has been eating me up pretty good. When you're awake, I'm sleeping. When I'm sleeping, you're doing shows. There you go. I just can't get on a sleep schedule. Well, it's all right. You'll, you'll level out soon. All right, so that's going to do it for our evening show here. We want to thank Linda Johnson, Dan Highmiller, Raymond Davis, and Joe Payne for stopping by. Fun My pleasure. Sh- turned out to be a really fun show. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we'll be de- just trying to decide if we're going to see that or go to the uh, evening show or do are you gonna the WSOF. Go are you going to go? We got the WSOF. You got some tickets, don't you? World Series of Fighting. Yeah, we do. You got so. some in with some ring girls or something? Is that uh, uh, what I hear? Yeah. Well, I got some in with the owner. That that was the big key. Okay. That's at the Hard Rock, right? At the Hard Rock. So, All right. All right. And there goes Umberto Brennis. So, we yeah. guys, we will see you tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific time here on the Mark Hoke Show. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you tomorrow.